Hello, this class is to help you understand how to find vertical asymptotes given a certain equation. There are two steps for finding vertical asymptotes. Step one is you simply set the denominator equal to zero. Step two is you factor if necessary and then from what you should already know from factoring, uh, you just set each factored portion equal to zero and that's how you come up with your solutions. I think the best way to approach this would be to just try a few examples. Let's say your function f of x is given by the equation x plus 2 over x squared plus 4x minus 5. So if we follow what we have up here, uh, step 1 tells us to set the denominator equal to 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is just that, x squared plus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. Step 2 is factor. Uh, this one isn't too hard to factor. You're basically just looking for multiples of negative 5 that are going to add up to 4. Uh, and two multiples of negative 5 that add to 4 would be 5 and negative 1. If you forget how to factor, refer back to a previous video on factoring. But we would split this up into x plus 5 times x minus 1. That's equal to 0. And then what we do is we set each separate component equal to 0. So I'm going to set x plus 5 equal to 0, and I'm going to set x minus 1 equal to 0. So what happens when I do this is I'm going to find that x is equal to negative 5, and I'm going to find that x is equal to positive 1. Uh, and those are basically vertical asymptotes. So remember that if x equals negative 5 and x equals positive 1, that just means a line that's going straight up and down or a vertical line because at every point along that line, the x value remains the same. Let me try to draw a little coordinate plane for you here and show you what I mean. So if we have x equals 1, that would be um, basically the line that goes uh, right up and down here. Me and draw this in. So x equals 1 would be uh, this line right here. So what a vertical asymptote means is that as you get closer and closer to the asymptote, your values uh, approach either positive infinity or negative infinity. And the reason for that is that your denominator up here is approaching 0. Now why is that important? Well, as, you, as your denominator gets closer and closer to zero, you might remember from a third or fourth grade class that your teacher told you you can never divide by zero. That's where the vertical asymptote comes from. The vertical asymptotes come from the fact that when x is at that value, you're attempting to divide by zero, and you can't do that. So you get this asymptotic line that cuts through your graph. x is negative 5 would be over here. Typically what happens um, when you have curves like that is uh, in some way it, it hugs the line as it approaches it. So as x is getting closer and closer to negative 5, it's going to hug that vertical asymptote and just kind of climb it. Uh, same thing on this side. It could hug this one right here. Now alternatively, it could end up going down this way. And it could have come down this way on the other side. It could do any one of a number of things. Uh, and it usually does the same on the other side. Now, how do we figure out exactly which one it's doing? The way that we have to do that is we have to actually evaluate the equation using limits. So let me show you what I mean by that. So what we want to do is we want to find the limit as x approaches these values. So I'm going to do the limit as x approaches a positive 1 from the right. That's what this little plus up here means. It means the limit as x approaches positive 1 from the right. And I'm also going to evaluate the limit as x approaches 1 from the left. So what exactly does this mean? Well, approaching 1 from the right, if you think about a number line, uh, on the right side you have numbers that are higher than 1. So this is as you get closer and closer to 1 coming from the right side. So one way of doing this, it's a way that's typically reserved for calculus courses, is you'll actually just do an xy chart. So there's your x and there's your y. And you can uh, kind of visually see what the equation, what the graph is getting closer and closer to as you allow your x value to get closer and closer to 1. First value you might try is 1.1. 1 .1. Next value you might try is 1.01. 1 
and then 1.001. If you plug these numbers into the equation, you can see that uh, your function is either going to get much, much larger or much, much smaller. And let me show you how to evaluate that. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, so again, just to repeat it, is telling you what is your y value getting closer and closer to as your x value gets closer and closer to something coming from a side. So graphically, what that will look like is as I'm coming at 1 from the right side, if my y value is approaching positive infinity, it looks like this. As I come along this line, as I come closer and closer to that asymptote from the right side, I can see that my y value is going up. On the other hand, if it were to approach negative infinity, it would look more like this. So as I get closer and closer and closer to that one value coming from the right side, I'm getting closer and closer to negative infinity. <clears throat> Now, how can I evaluate this from the function? What I'm going to do is I'm going to think of a number that's pretty close to 1, but just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go with 1.01, and I'm going to put it into the factored form of this equation. So the factored form of this equation is x plus 2 over x plus 5 times x minus 1. So if I'm coming at 1 from the right side, I'm going to use like 1.01. That would be coming from the right side, or 1.1. And one way to evaluate it is just look at the signs of every term. So if I have 1.1 plus 2, that's going to give me a positive value. So I'm just going to say I have a positive value here in the top. 1.1 plus 5 would also give me a positive value. 1.1 minus 1 would also give me a positive value. So what I can see here is that I have a positive divided by two positives times each other. So in the end, that's going to be positive. Because I know any vertical asymptote that's being approached goes towards either positive infinity or negative infinity, I know that this is going to mean that my limit as x approaches 1 from the right is positive infinity. Another way of stating this, sometimes your teacher will say something like, as x approaches 1 from the right, f of x approaches positive infinity. So now we can see, uh, if I were to draw our actual graph, we can start to see it coming together just a little bit more. Typically when you do these graphs, you're going to do more than just vertical asymptotes. You're also going to do um, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, intercepts, a number of different things to get the information that you need. But since we're just focusing on the vertical asymptote right now, I can show that as x approaches 1 from the right, my function is going to go towards positive infinity, like that. Okay, now what about as it comes from the left side, as it's coming from the left of this dotted line that I've just drawn? Well, what I do is I pick a number that's a little bit less than 1. I'm going to try 0.9, and I'm going to do the same process. So if I plug 0.9 into this right here, I'm going to find that I get a little bit of a different result. 0.9 plus 2 is going to be a positive number. Again, we only really care about the signs. 0.9 plus 5 is also going to be a positive number. Now, 0.1 minus, uh, 0.9 minus 1 is actually going to be a negative value. So we now have a positive divided by a positive times a negative. So that's positive divided by negative. And what that means is that in the end, it's going to be negative, and our value is going to approach negative infinity. So as I come from this dotted line from the other side, I can see that... I'm approaching negative infinity. We can go ahead and do the same things for x plus 5, uh, or for x equals n uh, negative 5, and we can try, okay, so what happens as I approach negative 5 from the left, and what happens as I approach negative 5 from the right? Well, let me just draw a number line to clear one thing up, because a lot of students will often make mistakes with this. Uh, as you go to the left on a number line, you become more negative. So as before, when we were approaching 1 from the left side, we had a smaller magnitude of a value of 0.9. As we, point, as we approach negative 5 from the left side, the value that we actually want to use is negative 5.1, which sometimes confuses students. Sometimes they think, oh, you know, 5.1 is bigger than that. It must be coming from the right side. But just remember the number line. You know, go back, go back to your roots. Uh, I always say one of the best ways to, to, to learn math and really refresh all the con basic concepts is to go back and teach a third grader. So if you have a cousin, uh, if you have... Uh, maybe a younger sibling or, or just a neighbor that needs help, uh, you'll find that it actually will, might even benefit you more than it benefits them. Coming from the right side, you would use negative 
again, you're just going to plug these values into the same equation the way that we did up here and find is it going to be positive or is it going to be negative and that's going to help you figure out is it approaching positive infinity or is it approaching negative infinity. This video is getting a little bit long so I'm going to let you go ahead and try that on your own uh, and I'm going to discuss how you do horizontal asymptotes in the next video.